In this video, I'm gonna give you a masterclass on depth of injection for botulinum toxins. This is where most injectors actually go wrong, and it's actually not the thing that's taught in most day courses. We focus on where to inject, but not how deep. In every area of the face, you will get subtly different results depending on the depth. By understanding depth, you'll be empowered to inject more accurately, get more predictable results, and fewer side effects. There's a key stage in your path to success where you suddenly stop thinking about injection points and you start to know how risk and reward changes with every shift in angle, depth and position of your needle. And that's when you suddenly become free to just create the results you want to create because you are automatically guided. Let me share with you what goes through my mind at different injection depths while I'm injecting botulinum toxins and how it guides me to optimize my treatment results. We can start by having a look at the frontalis. Frontalis, in many ways, in terms of injection technique, is one of the simpler areas of the face, but there are differences with different injection depths. I highly recommend, at the next cadaver course you go to, that you examine the cross-section of the forehead and see how thick the different layers are. You may be surprised to see how thick the dermis is, how substantial the hypodermis is, how thin the muscle is, and then how little space there is underneath. So if you inject intradermally into the forehead, what you'll notice is blanching when you inject. It's also very hard to actually compress the plunger because there's so much resistance due to the connective tissue. And you'll also see blanching. It becomes white on the surface of the skin and your patient, if you bother to ask them, will tell you that it hurts more than normal. So intradermal injections are seldom used in medical aesthetic because they are more painful and they actually are less effective at relaxing the muscle. Although you still get a result, it's not pleasant and it's inefficient. So we need to go deeper than this. To know your depth, start to pay attention to the resistance as the needle goes through the skin. You'll feel a substantial amount of difference at the beginning that gradually eases off and then almost disappears. At this point, if you go slightly further, you're likely right at the boundary of the muscle, potentially between the muscle and the fat, or maybe just underneath the muscle. But you're right at where most of those botulinum toxin receptors are. Most injectors prefer this point because if you go deeper still, you will touch the periosteum, which if done gently can be fine, but it can also blunt in your needle and make the rest of your needles more painful. So you can imagine this, in this case there is no dermis, so this is the hypodermis. You'll feel resistance as you go through the dermis and as you get to hypodermis, it gets much easier to inject, at which point it feels pretty much the same all the way through. What I try to do is just estimate the distance by which I'm fully through the dermis, but not touching periosteum. Let's have a look underneath what you will see under the periosteum. There's a small amount of loose areola tissue, which is underneath the frontalis muscle. Next, we'll discuss the injection depth when injecting the procerus. The procerus is the muscle that runs from the bridge of your nose into the forehead. It runs from the periosteum up towards the dermis in the forehead. So injection depth makes a huge difference to the effectiveness of injecting in this area. Similarly to the frontalis, the most superficial injection you could give would be in the dermis, and this would miss the bulk of the muscle because underneath the dermis is a relatively thick layer of fat before you reach the muscle itself. So this would be the ideal level to inject the procerus, but there's another layer underneath where you can inject into the deep fat pad. So the galial fat pad is a deep fat pad that runs underneath the procerus, and of course if you inject there, you're probably going to get the least amount of effect. Let's have a look at that in reality. So this white material represents the hypodermis, and injecting here will be less effective than if you keep going through the hypodermis. So just imagine what you'll feel. Resistance going through the dermis, then it eases off as you enter into the fat, and the muscle you normally can't tell is different, but if you keep going, eventually you'll touch the periosteum. The ideal level is therefore just beyond into the hypodermis, onto the surface or within the muscle itself. Going deeper and you'll be entering into this area here, which is the galial fat pad. And injecting here will make much less difference to the muscle than if you can get it at the right depth. So how do we improve our depth when injecting this muscle? I simply angle my needle towards the origin. So long as the resistance of the needle has been minimal for four to five millimeters as you're pointing down towards the origin of the muscle, you should be in the heart of where most of those acetylcholine receptors are so we can relax the muscle and get the best improvement for the least amount of product. Next, we'll inject the orbicularis oculi muscle, probably the muscle that is most incorrectly treated, certainly from what I've seen. 
The depth of the muscle is poorly understood. It's incredibly superficial underneath a very thin layer of dermis, which means our injections are often uncommonly superficial, which makes many injectors think they need to go a bit deeper, which is where the mistakes happen. Let's have a look at the anatomy and the layers that you'll pass through while aiming for the orbicularis oculi muscle. If you inject beneath the muscle, you're now injecting in the deep cheek fat, which is gonna be relatively ineffective. But deeper still, and we start to get near the important structures of the eye. Let's have a look underneath. Underneath the muscle, we have the lateral rectus muscle, which turns the eye laterally. We also have the lacrimal gland here, both of which are vulnerable to toxin injections. If you hit this muscle, you cause a lateral rectus palsy. If you hit the tear gland, you no longer will produce tears. This is why depth is so important when treating the eye. Furthermore, these superficial injections are fantastic for minimizing bruising, which is very important to your patients. The next important area of depth is when treating the lateral corrugator. This is the area most linked with eyelotosis, and it's all about depth. To understand this muscle, we need to understand that it runs from the periosteum medially to the dermis laterally. If you inject at the right level, you should be safe. Go underneath the muscle and the eye becomes at risk. So let's go through the layers that your needle might pass through and how I like to inject to mitigate that risk. It's here at the lateral part of the corrugator where the eye is most at risk. For this reason, we should aim to be pointing in a more superficial direction. The first layer is a tiny bit of dermis and then you go straight into the muscle next when it's lateral. As you become more medial, you may cross the frontalis muscle as well before you reach the corrugator supercilii. When injecting the medial corrugator, you may pass through either a small portion of frontalis or a small part of orbicularis oculi before reaching the body of the muscle. This is the correct place to inject, and this is also why I angle from lateral to medial, pointing towards the origin. But if I was to go deeper still, that's when we end up with problems. Let's have a look underneath. Underneath orbicularis oculi, we are very close to the orbital rim, these tiny foramen, and the eye itself, which can lead to eyelidtosis and a superior rectus palsy. This is one of the worst side effects when injecting botulinum toxin and is caused by the needle going too deep. Next, we'll consider the depth of injecting bunny line. So if you're injecting the levator labii elect nasi muscle, you need to know the approximate depth. If you prefer to inject just above the piriform fossa, it typically sits supported by a deep fat pad. If you inject too superficially, you'll likely be in the dermis and more likely to affect some part of orbicularis orus than the muscle itself. Go all the way down to the periosteum and you'll likely be underneath the muscle. So the ideal position is slightly intermediate where I'd like to place my injections. Next time you're injecting, pay attention to the level that you're at. Start to think with higher resolutions and this is key to becoming a much more proficient and confident injector by understanding what is going on, where your needle tip is likely to be residing, and therefore how you can optimize it with different depths, angles, or techniques, or doses. This is one of the core elements of becoming really confident with botulinum toxins. If you want to really master botulinum toxins, make sure you see the link in this bio where I have a comprehensive training program that covers everything from starting out all the way through to mastering full-face advanced treatments.